Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the dunya, the three Muslims. Today we're joined with the three Muslims, me, myself and I, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, we're going to be reacting to Aiden Ross talking about the Quran, Islam and religion. How do you feel about religion? It's beautiful. I When I went to Dubai, like, bro, Islam, like culture and religion is... So I immediately want to point out the fact that as soon as the brother asked, how do you feel about religion, Aiden Ross, it, it just right away thinks about Islam. Instantaneously, the only religion that comes to his mind is Islam, which I think speaks volumes for how he feels about Islam as compared to other religions. You know, he's a Jew. He's Jewish, uh, at least ethnically. And the first thing that comes to his mind when he's asked about religion is Islam. So alhamdulillah, I think immediately, whether it's conscious or subconscious, Aiden Ross knows that Islam, there's something about it that's special compared to other religions. Beautiful, like, people are so true to their religion. I think Islam is beautiful because, bro, if, if, who's Islam in this chat? If you're Islam, just put me. I don't know, listen bro, like, if you, if you were to offer someone who's, who practices Islam, here's $10 million, convert now. Like, they're, they won't do it, bro. Like, they're really about, that. they're super genuine and just like, they're true to that. That's why, like, I really respect people who embrace their, that culture. And, like, when I went to Dubai, it was nothing but love and just, you, you feel it from everyone. Like, everyone is just on some, like, genuine shit for real. Okay, so let's just talk about this for a second. Why is this the case? Why is it the case that if you go to a practicing Muslim and you offer them $10 million to leave the religion, they won't do it? And why is it that when you go to practicing Muslims, you find they are hospitable, they have great mannerisms, they will take care of you. They will literally let you into their own home and take care of you. Why is this the case? It's because Islam is not just a religion that comes and it's like, oh yeah, this is the true religion. This is the way of life. Come and practice and blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Islam is something that is self-evident. The Quran is something that is self-evident. You don't read the Quran and learn about it and think, well, this is just another book. That's not the case. Yeah, you can skim through it and throw it aside and out of ignorance say it's just another book. But when you read the Qur'an, you reflect on it, you look into it, you, you look at its claims and you look at the facts surrounding the Qur'an. Like for example, the fact that the Qur'an is the most memorized book on the face of the earth. And when I say most, I don't mean like one million and one people memorize the Qur'an and then one million other people memorize a different book. I mean, it's astronomically unique. There is no book even close to the Qur'an in terms of it being memorized, at least religious book or a book of that size, you know, 6,000 words or so. So immediately just hearing about the Quran, knowing that old people, kids, and everyone in between, you know, there's a huge population of people in the world who have memorized the Quran is already, I would even say miraculous for human beings, but obviously that's the wrong word to use in this context. So uh, superior. And as Muhammad Ajab says, you know, noteworthy at least. But what else is there? What else is there? There's things like prophecy in the Quran and made by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Things that are so clear. For example, very recently, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that the hour will not come. The day of judgment basically will not start, will not come until the, you know, the deserts of Saudi Arabia, Mecca, Medina, these places return to being you know, uh, gardens and meadows, like greenery. And you think that it's a, it's a desert. How is it going to do that? It literally just happened. It literally just happened. And go look to the extent of the green here. It, it's beautiful, subhanAllah. Go look it up and, this, and look up the hadith as well. This is the narration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 1400 years ago. And this is just one small example. He has many other prophecies, many other miracles of the Quran. And not one book has been compared to the Quran in any way. In any way. There's not a book on the face of the earth that could be compared to the linguistics of the Quran. The, um, the, like I mentioned, the people who memorize the Quran, the uh, scientific, uh, what people like to call miracles of the Quran, even the style of the Quran, the linguistic elements of the Quran, especially in the Arabic language, there's, there's nothing that's comparable to it. They talk about the whole ring composition and all that. And the Quran makes a challenge, says bring one person, one person or one group of people, just make one chapter like the Quran. Bring anyone to make just one chapter similar to the Quran. In 1400 years, no one has been able to do it. Why is that? It's because the Quran is unique. So that's why when you go to Muslims, they they will not give up Islam for anything. They know Islam is worth more than your million dollars. Your million dollars is nothing, especially nowadays, by the way. $10 million is nothing compared to Islam, compared to an eternity of reward and bliss from the one who created us. What is... What is
You know, compared to $10 million, what is $10 million compared to Islam? Nothing. So that's why Muslims are so strong in their faith. And obviously Islam teaches us to be good to, you know, both Muslims and non-Muslims, to be generous, to be kind, to have good character, to take care of those, to be hospitable, and so on and so forth. That's what's up. But religion is beautiful, bro. But I think if you're super religious and, um, like, bro, I'm Jewish and the Quran is like, there's a lot of truth to the Quran, bro. Like, I, a lot of stuff that I really like, like, like stand by. Like, the Quran is beautiful. And um, I haven't really studied the Holy Bible like that. But the Quran itself is just amazing, bro. Like, that's why you can really, I put, I, I don't know. It's just so, like, do you, do you think... So I don't I don't know nothing about the Quran. So educate me. It's, is the Quran like okay? Can I be honest? A, a lot of a lot of the stuff Cor the Quran has uh -huh. applies to today like a lot, a lot, bro. That's I, I watch videos on it and um, I read up on stuff and people discuss it and break it down because I don't really understand. Absolutely, absolutely. See, he gets it. See, Aiden Ross actually understands it. You read the Qur'an and you see that everything that's in it still applies to today. Why? Because the Qur'an is timeless. The Qur'an is a book that if you live in 1400, uh, or if you live in, in 600 AD, if you live 1400 years ago in Arabia, it applies then. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, built, established, and, and, and maintained an entire society, an entire nation based on the Qur'an. And this, by the way, is the same nation, the same nation that beat the Romans, whatever was left of the Persians, that conquered basically everything up to the borders of China and, and down to the, the bottom of Africa. Islam spread like that in a few decades based on the Quran, based on the, the religion of Islam, based on what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, brought to us through or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason, Aiden, I want to talk to you directly. The reason you read the Quran and you see, wow, you know, this is tremendous. And you get that feeling that, you know, you can't really get this from another book. Is because the Quran is the word from Allah. He, who knows you better than God? Who knows you and me as, as individuals better than God? The human being in general, who knows that, that, that biological creature more than God? Nobody. So Allah knows exactly, God knows exactly what gets you ticking, what makes you move, what makes you stagnant, what benefits you and what harms you. Actually better, much better than our own selves. That's why Allah says in the Quran, there may be something that is bad for you, although you love it, and there being be something that is good for you, although you hate it. You don't know, and Allah knows. This is the superiority of the Qur'an compared to other books and other ways of life. And how else does Islam apply today? Let's look at something very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about corruption that will manifest in the land and the sea from the hands of what human beings do. And, and I don't think there's a time where this applies more than to today. Where not only do you have you know corruption with bloodshed and murder, and, and, and all these things of innocent human beings around the world, also with animals and communities. Animal societies, animal species have gone extinct because of human beings in their hands and what they do. Also, look at how we're polluting the earth. Look at how we're polluting the ocean. Look at how we're, we're destroying animal life. We're, we're destroying forests. We're destroying natural reserves. We're, we're just, as human beings, as a nation, we're destroying a lot. And then because of what we've done, we see the effect it has in the world. The effect it has on the animals, the effect it has on the ocean, the effect it has on us eventually, it comes back and hits us eventually, all because of what our hands have done. That's still how the Quran applies today. That's something that's still very relevant to today. Things like legislation. And I want you to know a lot of the things we have in society today, the, like, for example, the notion of innocent till proven guilty, that came from the Muslims, that came from Islam, that came from the Quran. Even the even the basis, even the basis of if you want to make a claim, bring bring your proof and evidence is found in the Quran 1400 years ago. And this is the basis that people who like Ibn Sina, some he identified as a Muslim, although he had some beliefs that took him out of the fold of Islam. But Ibn Sina, he used things like that to, you know, really solidify the, the scientific method back then. And then you also had other people like uh, Ibn al-Haytham who created optics, and some say even other inventions that the Muslims had at the time. They created math and algebra and all these things. Because after receiving the Qur'an, they realized that Allah created the world in a, a kind of fixed way, a kind of a solid way, in a particular way, where you can actually measure, you can measure certain laws, you can measure certain realities, you could do tests 
and you can, you know, really use these things, create inventions, and understand how the world works. For example, Allah says in the Quran, "Have you seen the she camel and how she how she was constructed?" Because the camels back then were like you know, cars for them; they were made literally for desert travel. So Allah says, "Have you seen the she camel and how she was constructed?" You know, things like that really makes a person want to investigate biology, animals, life, even things like physics, gravity. And there are even some some people that say that Newton's understanding of gravity actually came from the Muslims a four time ago. Obviously, Newton's understanding was wrong. But still, regardless, Muslims were already kind of on this, you know, a thousand years ago. So, yani at the end of the day, when you look at Islam and the Quran, as opposed to other ways of life, other religions, you find it's really no competition. There is really no competition. And you look at society and the problems they have, degeneracy, disrespecting the parents, men not being men, every single problem that you can find in society today, whether it's with uh, capitalism or liberalism or whatever other ism there is, feminism or whatever, Islam fixes it. Islam is a solution to it. And I don't mean Islam says do this and that and you'll fix it. I mean Islam as a full system will not even allow such a thing to exist. Because Islam is preventative. It doesn't come give you a pill to give you a cure. It prevents the whole issue from arising to begin with because of the beautiful system of Islam. And with that being said, obviously we invite Brother Aiden Ross and Brother Ziaz and, and anyone else who wants to discuss Islam and religion onto the show to discuss with us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.